We're back with Jack Wagner. He, of course, he's in One Calls the Heart. He travels with his own posse. They're yes, all. upside down. <laughs> yep. there, you there you go. <laughs> right, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Although he does turn everybody's heart upside down. I agree. He I does. Agree. Oh, well, yes. Bill Abbott does. Yeah. I mean, uh, Bill, Bill, Abbott, Abbott, Bill Abbott does Abbott too. Who's our CEO? Too. Yes, no. I Bill. Okay, but he plays the character Bill yeah, Avery. Yeah, Avery's what I meant to say. On yeah. When Calls the Heart, and you know, uh, your character is courting a new love right now. That's Dottie. Dottie, yes. Yeah. What, yes. Are, what are you guys up to? Bill snuck a yeah. kiss with Dottie uh, Ooh, a couple okay. episodes ago, and. What's Took her to on? Abigail's Cafe for dinner and had some candles and cooked dinner for her and walked her to her front door and laid a kiss on her and left her completely dumbfounded and in mystery. Ooh. Doesn't see her again the rest of the season. <laughs> <laughs> what did he Love make? him and leave him, Bill. Huh? What did no. he make? Well, he Caloni, did he make? What no, did he make? but he can't because he's really busy in the town now. You're saving the town. You had there, a disaster happen. There are happen. some serious crimes going on yeah. and Bill is going to solve these crimes and He's not on the payroll of anybody. He's just basically, I call him, sort of the James Bond of Hope Valley. He charms women. He carries a gun. He rides horses. He picks locks and he solves crimes. And Does he drink martinis? No. Do they have Does, martinis? No. No, no martinis. No, 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 I was going to say, were mar martinis yeah. back then? No, no, just whiskey. And he plays no, a lot of vodka. poker. But it's weird. interesting. I, I really yeah. love this character and I love the show itself. And the fans, the Hardys, have made this show something yes, really special. Thank you very Thank much. You, Thank and you, Hardys. And it's so on. It's on Sunday nights on Hallmark at um, 9 o'clock on the East Coast Central and 6 o'clock uh, on the West Coast. And, you know, we have this beautiful pioneer town that has this majestic feel to it. And, uh, yeah. you know, it's really been a lot of fun so far. I wonder, too, because I'm always, you know, you have your gadgets not too far from you. And when you're doing a period piece, you probably can't have, like, a phone on you or anything like that for fear... You'd be he like, is that a cell phone yeah. in his pocket? <laughs> yeah. 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 No, the pockets, you know, you've got your uh, pocket watch in properly. Yeah. And all it's that. all period piece uh, clothing. Is. Interesting. Yeah. Well, here we have, we're going to drop in on, on a part of the show. This is a very uh, intense conversation happening between you and your estranged wife in real life and on the show yeah. tomorrow. Because okay. it's happened, and, which is Christina. So take a peek. Did you have Henry arrested because you don't like seeing the two of us together? He was arrested because we found evidence in his car. He said he was being framed. <laughs> and Henry Gowan always tells the truth. Sometimes we only see the side of someone we want to see. That's right. And you only see the side of him you want to see. You've always had a blind spot when it comes to that man. I might say the same about you. Did it ever occur to you that he's using you to get back at me? Henry would never hurt me. Well, I wish I could be as sure of that as you are. Working with Christina, who is now your ex-wife, ex and you worked together in General Hospital yep. for over 25 mm -hmm. years together. It's Felicia and Felicia and Frisco. 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 Do you remember that? <laughs> Frisco. Yes, Frisco. And now, uh, in your second season, you're working together again. So, and I know you you have children together. Mm -hmm. yes. So, what's it like working with the an ex-wife? I'd say it's very unusual yet very familiar. You know, yeah. I, think, I think we both uh, were different people, clearly, than we were in the 80s, and our lives are very different now. But, it, you know, we certainly, I think, had a chemistry in the 80s, and I think the audience that sees us on this show together, it brings memories of, of General Hospital back sure. and those magical characters. And, uh, you know, we've evolved as people, and I think that, you know, we have a new chemistry on this show, right. which is the important thing. Right. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. Thank it. you. Did, so, did that naturally find itself? Yes, yeah, it did. When you guys, because obviously yeah. you go through everything you do. You know, now, that's you, a great question. Yeah. It really did. It was natural, because there's no way you can kind of bring back something when you were right. in your 20s. Right. You know, when it was so adventurous and General Hospital was so popular. So we're just kind of finding a whole new chemistry yeah. here that, right. you know, sort of lends itself to this period in this show. And it's been a wonderful journey, I think, for both of us in our own separate ways. Like, imagine, like a healing process, yeah. too, through the uh, whole... The whole Not at all. No, no. <laughs> you guys get along so well together now. You are. You, you do share children together, yeah. so that's really important. Yeah, it's a very so cool walk. Yeah, I had to do that. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. No, okay. I, I, all right. It, uh, I, you know, you've been doing this so long. Uh, preparing for those emotional roles, because you, I, you know, whether it's in this or even in other roles that you take on, is it still the same process as it was for when you first started? Were they intimidating? Did you do a lot of work and realize I didn't have to really spend that time going that deep? When I was younger, I was very much, you know, into the process and studied a lot. Went to drama schools and studied with Stella Adler, 
and I was really then really trying to dig it out and make it happen, yeah. you know, and it, and it would happen, but now as I've aged and, you know, I know that if I'm prepared and know my lines and can hit my mark, which is the number one, that's the number one goal as an actor, <laughs> yeah. know your lines and hit your mark, yeah. you know, then I kind of like just let it happen. You know, I'm just available to, to let whatever happens in the scene happen. Yeah. And I feel that's how I've evolved as an actor. I don't plan anything. Yeah. And um, it's, it's working so far in this piece. There have been some poignant moments and there have mm -hmm. been some moments that have to be a, a, a real tough guy, you know, yeah. very tough. And so all of those have to happen naturally for that's me. That's, yeah, because emotion is now. not just soft in tears, it's being, you know, yeah. strong and sometimes. Yeah, and it's, it's better for the other actor too because you never know what they're going to give you and, and right. I, yeah. they don't know what I'm going to give them. And that's the beauty of acting, I think. Sure. It's yeah. the unknown. It's and then when it happens, right. it can be powerful. Yeah. Well, I know that you had to study when you were doing a, a soap like General Hospital, 60 pages of dialogue a day, and you and I, I read somewhere. Wait, how many did you six, say? 60. Yeah, my, you would Michael do that? Damien will attest to this. I'm yeah. sure he's had the same Is amount. That yes. Oh yeah, yeah. Sometimes we had 50, 60, even 70 pages of dialogue. I can't remember my day. phone number. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Yeah. Well, you were saying how important it is for you to really have a grasp of the lines in order for you to free up to, mm -hmm. to do what it is that you do in acting. Yeah, but that, that was a very extreme case uh, b back then. Yeah. You know, because if you were in a hot storyline, and that's when soaps were the top shows on television in, in, in the daytime, right. you know, you worked a lot. You worked five yeah. days a week. You'd have anywhere from 30 to 50 pages of dialogue a day. And it wasn't, you know, you just were... That muscle, that memory muscle was so strong. It's like if you do curls all day long, your bicep's going to get bigger. And I think many actors that came from the soaps from the 80s or 90s really have a great memory muscle. Is there, I don't even know if it's if this is a question to ask, but is there a shortcut when you're trying to, uh, there isn't. Is there a way you go, well, I just won't remember that line. It'll come to me in the moment. You know? We used to have cue cards when I first started. And so oh, you could good. look at you, you'd be given your line, and I'd look over there, read my line, and give it. But they cut budgets and they got rid of those, and it wasn't a very good crutch, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't oh, really? At all. <laughs> <laughs> we got cue cards. I don't know what yeah. Oh, we I, don't know what you're talking about. Ask <laughs> Jack about his, ask Jack about his characters. <laughs> Jack, her <laughs> cheater, you, you cheater. <laughs> so, well, I, you're, I, oh, what? I, no, go ahead. Where you're, you're gonna, you're do you remember, obviously, you remember when you worked here? You're not reading what's on the card. Oh, you should I be said, stick to okay, your card. Before your first role <laughs> on General Hospital, you worked as a tour guide here on... Uh, where are we? We Universal are on, Studio. I don't know, yeah, according I know to the, the card, card. Universal I know, Studios. You, you worked as a tour guide? <laughs> yes, I was. On the tram? On the trams that keep going by here. Yeah, I was a tour guide. Is oh that why I see a little twinkle in your eye yeah. when they drive by? by. You're like, oh, there I want to listen up and Fun. see where they are, they are in, in this, their monologue. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I used to do impersonations. I would do like... Mae West, you know, I'd go, right here is where she said her famous line, my little chickadee. <laughs> oh, that's W.C. Field. You know, and Mae West Mae was, West. why don't you come and see me sometime? <laughs> <laughs> and, and everybody would love that. Yes, yeah, so they love I, it. I'm no good at it anymore. But. Well, no, you, you know what's great is you do have a captive audience because they ain't leaving. They can't yeah. get off the card. You're like, yeah, yeah you got you, whether you like hour. my impersonation or not, you're exactly. with me the whole yeah. ride. Well, good.